thanks for tuning into New Life Health Ministries. Josh. And today we're going to be back on How to Read Your Bible. Doing some weird eyebrow stuff now, if you can't tell. It's really fun. Looking at prophetic literature. So the last type of literature we're going to look at in the Old Testament. We moving on up to the new side. Get it? New side? New Testament? Okay, sorry. So, um... Yeah, 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 yeah. So, prophetic literature. It's actually, it's a tricky one, but uh, it's something we're going to make it through. It's uplifting messages all about judgment and fire and brimstone. We all love that stuff. I actually do love that stuff, because I want to show you today that judgment is mercy. And I believe that's the point of the prophets. And I'm going to be able to try and build that picture a little bit as we look at how we're supposed to read it. First things first, how we're supposed to read it. I want to direct you back to something we did a while back called Subjects vs. Objects. A lot of people go through prophetic literature go, oh, a dragon. In the end times, there's going to be a dragon. That's what it's saying. Okay, there might be a dragon in the end times, but that's not the point. That's an object. The point is the subject behind whatever dragon we might be talking about. There's a few involved in the end times. It's tricky subjects. One day we might get to those. It'll be fun. That day is not right now. The day is not today. That day will happen. I lost my place. Give me a second. Okay. So, that's the main thing. When you look at prophetic literature, so really remember that. Even depending on what version of the Bible you get, they're going to interpret objects in for you. Like Daniel, though a lot of times when Daniel just said, a kingdom from the east, they'll be like, now he meant to say this particular country. Like, I think King James does that. A few different versions do that. And it's just kind of like, um... But it didn't say what country. There's no reason to type it in. But they do that. They translate because they don't think you're smart enough to figure out what the Bible's having to say. And because they think the objects are that important. When you're going through commentary, you're going through everything, prophetic literature is the one where most people get stumped looking at objects that don't really matter. When it's all about the subject. And we're going to look at that a few different ways down below. Um, one of the main things is people will look at different stones and jewelry and stuff and be like, Oh! The writer was saying this because he used this stone, and this stone represents this. And they go on each and every detail and find the meaning in every one. No. No, look, it's painting a giant picture. A prophecy is like one big, beautiful painting. You don't look at each little stroke and say, oh, that's the meaning of the stroke. No, you look at it as a whole, you find the meaning, and certain details bring out different aspects of that meaning, but it's one meaning. The details just bring out different aspects of the same thing. If someone's explaining something from prophecy to you, and they say, hey, here's the big meaning, but this little thing means this, and this little thing means that. No, they're doing it wrong. That's not what it means. That's not how it was written. That's not how that literature works. So when we go to interpret, we see that big picture. All the little stuff might help us understand it, and it might be great, but we don't need to worry about them. They are only going to help us understand the big picture. So look for the big picture. It's big picture reading when you're in prophecies. That's my take on that. A lot, you'll hear a lot of pastors do that, and I just want to warn against that. Uh, warn against looking at each stone and each little detail as if it has its own separate meaning. It doesn't. That's, that's not how the Bible works. It's not how this type of literature works. So subjects first, objects. Go back and read that post, and then whenever you do that, just make sure you look into it. And um, when you go to read prophetic literature, keep in mind all the stuff of, am I looking at an object? Am I focusing on something that matters or something that doesn't matter? Am I focusing on how God created the earth or am I focusing on why? How or why? Worship is in why. Spiritual transformation is in the why, not in the how. Not that the how isn't important, but when you read, focus on that first. Focus on the big picture. Focus on the subjects. And then work your way to understanding the other stuff. Because ultimately... If whatever else you come up with doesn't match the big picture, if whatever else you come up with doesn't match the subject of what's being said, then it's not God's word. It's not what God has to say. And um, It's a dangerous thing in churches. It's a dangerous thing in personal readings as well. Um, moving on from that, another uh, thing that I like to use is the comic book method when you read uh, prophecies. Because, like I said, one giant picture is the prophecy, right? Well, actually, to be more accurate, it's probably more like a comic book panel. I'm just going to reach down and grab a random comic book for fun now. Uh, here we go. Batman. Panels. Okay, so, the way panels work 
is it has one picture that's portraying a meaning, but it's not the whole meaning, and you have to take all the panels together and see that whole picture. So um, whenever we did Isaiah, did the Isaiah Apocalypse, we could take that God slain the Leviathan by itself, and we understand Leviathans are chaos, and we see God killed chaos, that's cool. But unless we look at the whole picture with the other panels of how God carved out a place in the mountain, how God protects us, how God judges people, if you just take the Leviathan slain by itself, go read that for context if you need to. But um, it's when the world crashes down. It's, it's, it's a pretty good post. I think so. That's my favorite from myself. It means nothing at all. But um, if you just take God slain the Leviathan, you don't have the whole message. But you have to take all the different paintings from the prophecy as a panel in a comic book telling one story. So you got to figure out, what's this picture? What's the next picture? And when I put the pictures together, what do they mean? Comic book method. See more on it when we do, uh, we're going to do Daniel chapter 7, Tuesday. I'm going to show you exactly how you go through all this. But lastly, prophecies, prophetic literature forms a similar layout a majority of the time. And that layout, when you look for it, here's what you're looking for. It's going to start with, hey, you're doing wrong. Repent. And that's something that's applied to everybody. That's a subject that's applied to all of us. God's saying, hey, you're doing wrong. Repent. That is the message of conviction from God. If you're addicted to something, whether it be food, whether it be pornography, if you're lying, if you're sinning, if you're hurting other people, repent. Or the next part, three parts to every prophecy, usually lays out like this. Repent. The next, if you don't repent, fine, I'm going to judge you. Here's what your future is because you did not repent. You will be punished. You will be made to be nothing. God does not allow sin to go unpunished. Jesus died because he took the punishment of all of us. But there, so when we are saved, Christ takes our, pun our spiritual punishment, all that, but there's still consequences that come along with that. Um, I want to do a post on sex, drugs, and alcohol soon because I want to show exactly what happens to your body physically when you make these decisions because there's always a consequence. But then there's a third part of each prophecy, and that is hope. Our hope is in Christ. But in the old prophetic literature, sometimes their hope would be that God said, I'll rebuild Israel. God says, I'll rebuild Jerusalem. God never judges without providing hope afterwards. And remember, Jesus took on all of our punishment, but that's not the end of the story. Because you look at Revelation, and Jesus comes back to judge the earth. And there's hope for those of us who believe in him to meet up with him in heaven. But for those of us who do not repent... Step two is the end. It's just judgment. But what I want to tell you today is that it's not just judgment. If you do wrong, you're just going to be judged. I don't want to leave you at that. I want to give you that hope. And I want to explain why there is judgment. Because today's church, a lot of people, all they see is some judgmental people. I want to show you what judgment really is. Judgment is mercy. God judged Jesus so that we can be forgiven. And think about Jonah. I'm going to end on this. Most of us know the story. God says, hey, I want you to go tell these people that if they repent, I'll help them. And Jonah's like, nah. And this is prophetic literature. And um, God says, no, you're going to go do this. And he goes to the people and says, God's going to judge you. And then what's he do? Well, he doesn't go to the people. He gets swallowed by a whale because he didn't want to go to the people. But eventually, he goes to the people and says, God's going to judge you. And then he waits by a tree, looking down on this city, going, can't wait for God to burn them up. He said he's going to judge them. That's the prophecy. I said, repent. They're not going to listen. And I told them, if they don't listen, God's going to judge. So now comes God's judgment. But here's the catch. In the story of Jonah, it's one of the only stories where the people did listen. They fell on their faces before God and repented and said, we will do better. So they didn't get judged. God showed them what would happen to them. They repented, so he showed them mercy. But then Jonah does the opposite. Jonah waits up there, and the judgment never happens. So many Christians today just want judgment, but they don't understand that God wants mercy. God promises judgment so that he can show mercy. There was, um, man, there was a time in Wilmington where we were, we were walking somewhere, and I was in the road, and I had a friend come and push me real hard out because there was a car coming, and I didn't see it. And very well may have saved my life. And here's the thing, it hurt, yeah, but he saved my life. Judgment's meant to save us. God's trying to come and tackle us out of the way of hell, and sometimes that's what judgment is, is a good, solid tackle out of the way of hell. Listen, challenge everybody. Think of judgment as mercy. 
sometimes we need to be brought down to a level that we can see the whole picture so that God can work with us. And that's why prophecy exists, because God wants to show us our hope so that we can strive to be better, and he wants to show us judgment so that he can show us mercy. Because all judgment ultimately is is mercy. God judged his son to show mercy to us. God judges us now so that we don't end up in eternity in hell. But if we don't listen to judgment, if we don't see it as the mercy that it is, then that is the ultimate punishment. The punishment for not being judged is hell. We all pray against judgment. We all scared to use the word judgment anymore. But you know what? Judgment is mercy. And that's not saying that it's our job as Christians to judge others. But it is God's job. And it's our job to spread that message. Because that's what the Bible says. He says, I will punish those who do not listen. Because I want to show them mercy. That's what I want everyone to leave with. When you read prophetic literature, look for hope. Look for mercy. Look for judgment. And of course, all the other literary strategies are going to be down below. But that's going to be the main point I want to stress today, is that judgment is mercy. And if you think that's an important message, go ahead and share this post, share this video, all that other good jazz, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, whatever, Instagram, all that good fun things. Sometimes they're really not that fun. But share this if you think it's important. Um, follow me down below, joshuanoel.net, or you can follow me on Instagram or any of that other stuff. It's going to be in the credits. It's going to tell you all of where you can follow me at. Love to hear from everybody, so if you want to comment or anything down below, it would be awesome to hear from you. And have a great time. Till next time, something. I don't have a goodbye phrase, so something. Something.